Hello everyone, welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker and I am your host. Today we're going to be talking about the mouth, how life and death lies in the power of the tongue. I know you all have heard that proverb before, so I want you to like, share, and subscribe. I want you to get into this video today. Enjoy the show. Good morning. Welcome to Sex Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker, and I am your host. And I want to welcome you all today. Um, if you are a person that follows me every day, then that means that you saw that I posted a video on yesterday because I did not go live yesterday. But I did post a video. I'm going to take this scarf off, y'all. I'm kind of warm. Um... I didn't go live yesterday, but I posted a video to set the tone for my live today. And the video was about controlling your mouth. So, YouTube, this video is 15 seconds long. Watch this video. For you, sisters, we can start with our mouth. The good black woman can control her mouth. She don't have to say everything that comes up. It's okay if he get the last word sometime. Okay. Okay, let's talk about the mouth and how powerful it is. Okay. Proverbs 18 and 21 tells us that life and death lies in the power of the tongue. Meaning that our mouth has the ability to give life, but it also has the power to destroy as well. And being that I deal with people on a everyday basis, I'm talking about tons of people, whether they're emailing me, whether they're inboxing me, whether they're coming to my store, whether they are booking sex coaching sessions, I'm constantly being in contact with people and dealing with their relationships. That's why I more so transitioned from the fun party side of the industry and transitioned into the sex coaching side of the industry. Um, one thing that has been consistent when I'm talking to couples is them tearing each other down with their mouths. Meaning in the beginning, y'all had all these great things to say to each other. You all were affirming each other. You all were stroking each other's egos and all of this. But now you're in a relationship. you constantly picking each other apart. And it's almost like a tit for tat. She said this, so I'm going to say that. He said this, so I'm going to say that. And then when he said this, I'm going to take it a little bit further. And I'm going to hit below the belt. And now I'm bringing in family members. And I'm talking about his mama. I'm talking about how he ain't shit and how he ain't came from shit and all the people that was before him wasn't shit. And in other words, we picking this person apart and we letting them know that you not as great as I told you you was. I told you you was great, but you really ain't that great. I wanted to talk about this because y'all hear me talk about my mama a lot. But my mama, she was a beautiful person, but she was a flawed person. And she was a person who could not maintain healthy relationships. Even with me, the person that was her only child. Now, we all know that when we're dealing with family, a lot of times we tolerate certain things from people because we love them. But it does not necessarily mean that we like the things that they do or we like the things that they say or we like the behavior. But we tolerate it because they family. When I grew, one, one thing about me, I have always been the type of person that I don't have to bump my head. I can look at how you live your life and know what to do and what not to do to not go through what you done went through. And when I observe her life and her relationship, styles and patterns, I always knew that, that I never wanted to be that. Now, the thing about it is sometimes you become that and you don't even realize that you become that because that's all you've ever seen. And at one point in my life, I became that. 
It's very disappointing, but I did become that because I felt like I had to. Because see, as women, we have this thing about you not gonna fuck over me. You not gonna handle me. If you think you gonna do A, B, and C, I'ma show you that I can get a, I can go a little bit further than you. A lot of us have that in us. But what I had to understand as I got older was that doing it the way she did it was not necessarily a healthy way to maintain a relationship. And it still did not get me the result that I wanted. The conclusion at the end was not what I wanted. When I'm talking about maintaining healthy relationships, I'm talking about these type of people that have a vicious mouth. They don't maintain jobs. They don't maintain healthy family relationships. And they damn sure don't maintain healthy, intimate relationships. And they have this thing where they walk around feeling like, oh, that's just me. That's just who I am. And I ain't got to change it. And I ain't taking shit. I ain't taking nothing off of nobody. And this shit going to go my way or it ain't going to go nowhere at all. And I get that mentality. But when you look at people with that type of mentality, I want you to just look at them. I want you to look at their life. I want you to look at their legacy. I want you to look at their relationships. I want you to look at their children. I want you to just look at them. And they are not necessarily the best version of themselves. And those people come off like you, you, you love to see them coming because of them, but you hate to see them coming because of them. Like we gonna be real. Let's be real. I love my mama to death, but I did not like her ways at all. To the point where it was damn near you dealing with somebody that was impossible to deal with. Who could not ever acknowledge that they were wrong. Who just basically lived their life like a tyrant and just was always angry. And a lot of women that I see on my page, when I see them posting, they really put me in the mentality of my mama. See, the thing is, my mama only dealt with married men. And I honestly believe the only reason she dealt with married men was because a lot of men just would, a lot of men that were of any type of value just wasn't going to deal with her in her ways. But these men had to go home. So that means that it wasn't anything that they had to deal with on a regular basis or everyday basis or all day basis. And yet with her, it was a good time as long as things were going her way. But when it wasn't going her way no more, it wasn't a good time no more. I sit on this platform and I watch and I read the comments. And, I, and it's like the bitterness comes through the post. The anger comes through the post. And I just want you to understand that in order for you to have any type of relationship worth having... You're going to have to be able to get along with people. You're going to have to be able to uh, come to be able to agree with the person that you with. You're going to have to have conflict resolution skills and everything ain't got to be an argument. Everything ain't got to go your way. And you have to be mature enough to know how to agree to disagree. In other words, men are not women. We can't go in and expect the men to act like women. I posted this last night. Whose responsibility is it to keep the fire in the relationship? <laughs> Most people on that post responded both. But when you look at relationships as a whole and you looking at how chaotic they can be, and how, how many issues that people are having in a relationship. Somewhere along the lines. You should be wise enough to say. I got to look at this from another approach. Because I'm saying both. But in reality. Men are not planners. See when you study men. And you understand a man. And you done been raised in a house with a man. Or have had some type of male mentor or just been in the company of men. And I ain't talking about, you know, just watching them sit outside and drink and all of this kind of stuff or 
watching them come over to your house and, you know, your uncles get together and all of this kind of stuff. I'm talking about really knowing men. We know that men are not planners. We know that men just naturally are not organized. They are not. And I ain't talking about your one man who is organized or your one man who plans. I'm talking about we looking at men as a whole, as a, a unit, a group. Planning is not their strong suit. So now that we know that planning and being organized is not their strong suit, why is it that we're getting upset that we're having to be the ones to do the planning in the relationship to make sure that we'll continue to have activities and having a good time and going on date night and, and coming up with different ideas and throwing them off each other? Why is it that we get upset and say, I'm always the one doing this thing. I'm always the one putting forth the effort. I'm always the one dressing up. I'm always the one uh, planning this and doing this and doing that. Men's strong suit is a lot of time covering the finances. If you tell him, look, I got this plan. I want you to get dressed. I want you to be ready at this point in time. Men will do that. They will follow your instructions. They will follow your instructions. They will do that for you. But you want them to go make the reservation. You want them to go do the research on the uh, on the venue. You want them to go do all the shit that women do. You want you want a fucking woman. You looking for you looking for a woman. Cause see, when you understand that you got a man, then you understand that you ain't got to be mad that he not doing all that because that ain't his role anyway. It's just natural, ain't his role. It ain't what he do. Yeah, he'll plan some shit for your birthday. Yeah, he'll plan some shit for Valentine's Day, but them only two two days out the whole year. And we got 365 days in the year. And here you walking around pouting because you having to be the one to keep the date night going and initiate the date night and initiate this. Yes, when he's courting you, he will say, I want to take you out. But a lot of times when he say, I want to take you out, he'll ask you where you want to go. He'll say, where you want to go? Where you want me to take you to? We are the planners. So don't be surprised if 80% of the time in your relationship, you the one that's planning shit and keeping shit in order and keeping it going. Look at it like this. Your husband is the owner of the team. It's a football team. I'm just say any type of team. Any type store owner. Your husband the owner, right? Every owner normally has a manager. The manager not normally knows what the owner likes and the expectations of the owner. Look at it like this. He is the owner and you are the manager of the team. In my house, Spencer is the owner. He makes sure the mortgage paid. He makes sure the light bill paid. He makes sure the water bill paid. He makes sure those things happen. Those are our basic essentials. Food, I cover that. That's what I cover. Being that he is the owner and he's making sure that the team has what it needs, here, I come along and my job is to manage all of this shit. Manage it. Manage it. They got doctor's appointments to today. I made the doctor's appointments. I got on the phone with the nurse practitioner. I made the doctor's appointment. They got doctor's appointments today for 11 o'clock. Him and my daughter. I'm saying all that to say, he tells me, Sharonda, I don't feel well. Yeah, he could get on the phone and make the doctor's appointment himself. Yeah, my daughter could get on the phone and make the doctor's appointment herself. But guess what? They come to the manager with the problem. And the manager is supposed to come with a solution to the problem. At your job, if you got a problem, a lot of times you go to the manager with the problem. And the manager comes back with the solution to the problem. Everybody's playing their role the way they're supposed to, but I think a lot of times women go into marriage and they don't necessarily know what their role is in the marriage. And the thing is, you get frustrated with your role and then here go your mouth. Here go your mouth. Your mouth. You could have called and made your own doctor's appointment. 
Taylor, you old enough, you 17 years old, you can pick up the phone and make your doctor's appointment. When y'all gonna learn how to do stuff for yourself? I ain't gonna be here forever. Now you done tore everybody down and all they did was came to you with their problem because you are the manager. Don't sign up for these roles. Don't sign up to be a wife. Don't sign up to be a mother if you don't want to play your position. Don't apply for the job. And it's just that simple. Don't apply for the job. I sit here and I watch people tear each other down. The proverb says life and death lies in the power of the tongue. That lets you know your mouth so powerful that you have the ability to either build the people up in your house or you have the ability to tear the people down in your house. And I see so much bitterness and meanness and hatefulness from women. And the thing is, y'all don't even know you're doing it. And if you're doing it right here on this Facebook, I could only imagine what it's like to live with you. I look at just the, your attitude towards certain things. I brought up the paper play versus the real play. And some of y'all got so mad and offended about wash, taking 12 seconds to wash a dish. And you know what my husband said when he was reading all that? He was like, damn, them niggas ain't even worth 12 seconds. You mean to tell me they bringing all this to their household? They, they bringing comfort to their household? And they ain't even worth 12 seconds? It's about your mentality and your attitude towards certain things. And trust me, I get it. A lot of us work very hard outside of the household. I get it. But if your position is, look, I choose to do this because I work really hard. That's very understanding. Because one thing, everything don't flow every household. Every, you know, everybody don't run their households the same. And I understand you saying, you know, during the week when I'm working... Everybody got to do paper plates because I got a lot going on. But on Sundays, I fix my family plate on a real plate. We, we do utilize the dishes in our house from time to time. That's understandable. But for you to sit up there and say, I ain't putting it on no real plate because I ain't washing no dishes because he don't do this and he don't do that. And yada, 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 yada. Baby, look, the, the, the issue ain't even the plate. You got other issues in your household. If you really want to get down to it, the issue ain't even the plate. So what I want you to do this upcoming year is just to be mindful that when you talking to people, they human, they have feelings and either your mouth will draw your man to you or make him run on the other side of town. If you sitting up there saying he ain't never home, he always at his mama house, he always at his brother house, he always at his friend's house, you need to ask yourself why the fuck he ain't at your house. What, what, what is going on at your house that he don't want to be there? Because people, they, let me tell you something about a man. See, when a man want to be around you, all them other people, gonna, they going to be on the back burner, baby. See, when a man trying to get to his woman, I ain't talking about his wife. Because see, when you, when you his wife, a certain part of you supposed to be his woman too. And, and a lot of, I keep telling y'all about that feminine asset. A lot of y'all done lost that feminine asset. I'm, I'm Spencer's wife, but I'm also Spencer's woman. Meaning that when Spencer had a hard day, he can come and lay on these titties. And I'm going to tell him, baby, it's going to be all right. I'm going to rub in him hand. I'm going to tell him, oh, baby, I love these gray strengths coming in your head. These gray strengths are sexy to me. I love all of this. I love to see how you changing and growing up. I, I'm, I'm liking the, the, just to be able to watch you mature into an older man. He able to come here and I'm his comfort. I'm the person that's reassuring him that it's going to be all right. See, at that point, I removed the wife title because the thing is, the wife title is just a piece of paper. It's just a ring. And at this point, I become his woman. A man run to his woman. Okay? So a lot of y'all are wives and y'all got the ring and y'all got the paper, but bitch, you ain't the woman. See, he running on the other side of town to the woman who can comfort him, who gonna affirm him, who gonna tell him shit to make him feel good. See, when you doing all of this and you the woman, he ain't trying to go to his mama house, baby. He ain't trying to go to his brother's house. He ain't trying to go hang out with his friends. He trying to be up under his woman. 
because she make them feel good. So if you notice that your man trying to be everywhere but with you, check yourself. Ask yourself, am I the feminine asset in this relationship? Because one thing about a man, he has to have a feminine asset. It got to exist in his life. And if it don't exist with his wife, he's going to go find it somewhere else. You want to know what y'all going to learn at this, this school, this wife school or whatever it is that I'm going to call it? Because I, I keep saying wife school and it may end up being that. But these are the type of the, these are the type of things that you will learn. And it's not that you don't know them. It's just that you need to be reminded about who you are in the relationship and the role you're playing. And a lot of times we're not getting the outcome that we want is because we're not bringing our best version of ourselves to the table. We just not. And it's the truth. Don't nobody want to be around somebody fucking whining and complaining all day long. I don't want to hear that shit. Now, don't get me wrong. I want to hear your concerns. I want to hear those type of things. But don't nobody want to hear about, oh, you don't do this and you don't do that. Need to get a refund. Don't nobody want to hear that shit. Don't, wanna, don't nobody want to hear about, you ain't took the trash out again today. I, I just showed John Yetta. I'm not touching no, I'm not, I will take the trash, the, the small trash to the big trash can, but the big trash can, I'm not touching it and taking it to the road. And if it don't make it to the road, it just don't fucking make it to the road. And I'm going to walk past that shit and it don't bother me no more. Because I understand that guess what? We all forget sometimes. Sometimes we all have a lot going on. Sometimes we don't even remember what day of the week it is as adults. We so goddamn busy. So the thing is, if you see that the, it's the day before the trash go, I say, baby, don't forget the trash go out tomorrow. Or put a little note on the refrigerator. Baby, the trash trash dates, don't forget the trash go out. Put a little reminders. Send a text message. But do it in love. Don't nobody want to hear about how lazy they is and they don't ever do shit. It ain't what you say, it's how you say it. Your mouth. When you having a conversation just like... Um, the lady on my video that y'all just did, well, if you're on YouTube, you didn't already watched it. You ain't got to have the last word. It's called picking your arguments. Pick it. I literally had to learn how to pick my arguments because see, when people don't pick their arguments, they have this expectation of perfection from people. And that means that they will jump down and they throw it about every little bitty thing. They will pick them apart about everything that they done done and didn't do or was supposed to do. And you said you was going to do and you didn't do. And, and pick your arguments. Is it really that serious? For real. Is it really that serious? I have to bring this to your attention because it's vital to your relationship. I had to learn because, see, I came from a mama who said what come up, come out. And it didn't necessarily benefit her all the time. She could not keep a job because she would go there and get into it with everybody. And she going to go there and run that shit and tell the managers what to do. Imagine, come, imagine somebody like that at the job who will go to the job and literally tell the managers what to do. Going to come there and tell you how to run your shit. For real. I had to learn that in order to elevate in life, you got to check that shit early on. Your attitude is going to reflect your altitude. That basically means your attitude is going to reflect how far you go. And if you notice that every time you look up, you got to switch from job to job to job to job to job. You need to check yourself. If you got to switch from main to main to main to main, you got to check yourself. If don't nobody want to see your ass coming, you got to check yourself. Sometimes we got to self-reflect. And I tell y'all all the time, I love my mama to death, but she was a motherfucker. She was something serious to deal with. And, and her anger, it was almost like people around her just did things the way she wanted it done because they didn't want to have to deal with who she, who she was and who she could become. You don't want to have people doing things from that type of, you know, you don't want it to come out of fear. 
You want them to do things for you because they want to. You don't want your man walking around talking about some, oh, I better do this because if y'all don't, she going to be mad and she going to do this and she going to do that. No, you want to, you want him to do it because I love my baby and I want to see a smile on her face and I want to make her happy. And I want to do it because I want to do it. You don't want, you don't want to rule with an iron fist, fist to with people doing things out of fear because they don't want to have to deal with your mean ass. A lot of times I asked y'all last night and the lady said on his Sharonda, I thought what you asked was a trick question. It was, it was, it was a trick question. Because like I said, a lot of y'all go in shit with this 50-50 mentality. Oh, we both going to play a role. We both going to do this here. And then you have that expectation that you both going to be doing this and both going to be doing that. And then when you realize that you're the only one doing it, you salty. When the truth is, uh, he just being a man and you really just being a woman. So if you want to see more activities and more date nights and certain things in your relationship... Have the conversation with your spouse and say, look, baby, this year we're going to do more. We're going to go, we're going to, we're going to do more and spend more time with one another. I, we just did the day night Tuesday. This was Spencer's turn to plan. The, the, the thing was you could not spend over $20 with the date night. That was our rule for the month of December. You could not spend over $20. He decided we're going to go to sex. We're going to smell fragrances. Uh, we, we went to the bond, bond, nine, no, bond number nine collection. We smelled different fragrances. We got some food from Chick-fil-A. We listened to talk radio on the way back, had excellent dialogue and debated certain topics and really spent time with one another. That was his day night. We alternate planning date nights because that's the way it was set up with us that we alternate planning it. But if you and your man have not set up to alternate planning it, don't feel played when you feel like you're the only one that's planning it. Now, sometimes you are paying for it. I'm going to say this. Is sometimes he's paying for it directly, meaning that when the people bring the check, he paying for it. Or when you get to the register, he paying for it. However, sometimes he's paying for it indirectly, meaning that He's taking care of everything else in your life, all of the major bills and all of this, which frees up your money to be able to handle the date night. So a lot of times, a lot of times y'all saying, well, shit, I'm the one who keep on paying for it. But the thing is, he freeing you up from other obligations. So you got the extra money to pay for it. He's supposed to do all of that and take care of the date night too. Then what the fuck you supposed to do? You, you supposed to not do nothing. Some of y'all selfish as hell. Check yourself. It starts with you. I'm going to read this and this is going to conclude my life. Today begins a life of giving and sharing, nurturing and support, allowing each other the freedom to change. Allowing each other the freedom to change. I'm going to repeat that. I just want to read the first line. Today begins a life of giving and sharing, nurturing and supporting, allowing each other the freedom to change. This is marriage vows from Amber's wedding. I asked the officiant to give me a copy. When you decide that you want to be married, when I was asking some of y'all say, I said, who want to be married in 2021? A lot of y'all said, me, I, I want to be married. And then when I said, why? Crickets. You couldn't respond, why? When you say you want to get married, understand it's going to be a lot of giving and sharing. It's a lot of giving and sharing. It's not an individual thing. It ain't a 50-50 thing. It's a lot of giving and sharing, pulling towards one another. Because sometimes you got way more to give than your spouse. Sometimes your spouse, they tank empty. And sometimes you got to go do like my video said and refill that emotional tank. Sometimes you got to go refill that tank. And sometimes you got more in you than they got in them. And other times you at your lowest. And here they come refilling your emotional tank. Nurturing and supporting. That means ain't none of this, ain't none of this speaking negativity into another person's life. It's a like nurturing and supporting. That ain't tearing nobody down with your mouth. It's a like nurturing and supporting. Allowing each other the freedom to change. Lord Jesus, if I can get y'all to understand this, you ain't going to be the same person that you was at 20, at 30. And when you get 40, you ain't going to be the same person that you was at 30. And when you get to be 50, you're not going to be the same. You're going to change and evolve over time. Circumstances going to change. 
at one point children in the house, so you might not be able to get out as much as you like. But as they get older and can stay home by themselves, now you can get out more. Eventually they will leave the fucking house and you'll be able to run around that bitch naked when you get ready. Your life will change. The art of marriage is the little things. I'm reading this. The art of marriage. It's an art to marriage. In these rounds, it says it's an art to marriage. Y'all, I love planning and having things to look forward to. It keeps me going. The, the problem is a lot of y'all ain't got nothing to look forward to. Why your man ain't home? Ain't shit to look forward to. But you, they're bitching and complaining. I always got something to say about something. Don't like nobody. You ain't happy. Don't want to see nobody else happy. Change your ways. I saw somebody comment on my Instagram and she said, you saying <laughs> to not to, to let him have the last word sometimes. But what happened if you got something to say and it just, it, it just, you want uh women to, she said, you want women to internalize their feelings, which cause them pain. Baby, that's all in your mind. That's all in your mind. You ain't got to say every fucking thing that come to your mind. You can let some shit slide sometimes. It ain't killing you. If it's all of that, write that shit down on a piece of paper and tell them, look, read this later because I just got to get this off my chest. But you ain't got to say it right then. And then it's a lot of times that me and my husband have a disagreement and I just be like, you know what? I'm going to let him have it at this moment. I'm going to let him have it. And then once things have cooled down, I come back and say, look, let me say this because I've been thinking about this all day. And then I say what I got to say about the situation. But I didn't say it during the time where everything was going on and it was heated. I had to learn that. Because what I learned was, see, when you say what you got to say, and then I feel like I just got to say what I got to say, then a lot of times what I'm doing is escalating a situation that didn't even have to be escalated. I learned through anger management how to de-escalate situations. I learned through anger managed conflict resolution. But I did this shit with on-the-job training. I'm trying to keep y'all from having experience on-the-job training. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep you having experience on-the-job training. Because sometimes when you're doing on-the-job training, you ain't getting that shit right, you get fired. You get demoted. You get pay cuts. You get all kind of shit. And, me, and all I'm saying is you don't get the outcome that you want. That's all I'm saying. I ain't saying, like Webby say, somebody might get laid off and you might get promoted. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is you don't get the outcome that you're looking for. Okay. Well, that's going to wrap up my live today. I want you to just be mindful of your mouth. I want you to handle everybody that you come in contact in love. I want you to be mindful of your tone. I want you to think before you talk. I want you to have a conversation with the idea of wanting to understand what the other person is saying versus wanting to respond to what they're saying or react to what they're saying. If you're smart, you would have been taking notes. <laughs> but um, I'm here early today. I'm actually here. I'm waiting on UPS to come with the female honey. The female honey will be in stock today. The regular price will be $19.99, but it is on sale today. We are closed tomorrow for the first. We are closed, but it will be on sale online. As of January the 2nd, it will be back up to regular price. Okay. I just want to make sure we all understand January 2nd is going back up to regular price, but it is on the website. Um, if you're on my YouTube, the website is below www.dppgstore.com. You all be safe. You all be blessed and happy new year. I will not be going live tomorrow because I will be enjoying my family and we do our annual vision board party. So I will be um, spending time with them. I will see you all January the 2nd. Be blessed.